I want to say just a word about the Apokoman. The Pesach is coming. You might say, well, you know, it's still a little early. Today is the day of salvation. Today, there was a shooting about 20 yards from my front door. If I'd been out there, I could have been killed with uh, the, uh, the bullet because it went through a young man's abdomen two or three or four rounds. Uh, you see, you, you can't say tomorrow I will do this or I will do that. Today, we have to live as if today is the only day that is promised to us. And we may not even live through the whole day. And, you know, Daniel got a word from the Lord about the bar Enos. And there's all kinds of little hints that the prophets were given. That this glorious God would send Moshiach. Not just as bar Enos, but as the Malik Hashem. He appeared not just as a man, but before that he appeared uh, at various times, even uh, in the Exodus trek across the wilderness, in various in various theophanies or messianic ophanies, whatever you want to call them. And uh, when I when I take a bottle of grape juice and I go down to the uh, liquor store down here where they have very expensive bottles of wine. Wine has been aged for months or even years. And I give the bottle of grape juice to the person in there. They're not going to say, oh, this you saved the best wine to last. They're going to say, what is this, grape juice? And the great quantity of wine that was produced. We're talking about the Tivila, the the mikvah washings of the Tivila, the hand washings before meal. We're talking about a great quantity of water that has turned into a great quantity of aged, delicious real, expensive wine, wine that was not saved till the end, uh, brought out after everybody was drunk, uh, uh, but wine that was given immediately. Now, I'm a teetotaler. I don't drink at all. And I'm uh, in admonishing you to be a teetotaler. But I'm not going to let that mar my interpretation of the scriptures. In an instant, the creator, the Amon at the side of Hashem, the Zunfundar the the Devar Hashem, who created the stars in the sky, in an instant, he created wine that was aged. Now that doesn't make sense. That's impossible, but it happened. It was a miracle. And the Bible says, take it or leave it. You think it might be a little bit strange how this Baranosh was born, the virgin and all that. You think it might be a little strange that he could feed all those people with a little boy's sack lunch just like he could turn all that water into all that wine you think that's a little bit hard to swallow or about walking on the water hydroplaning on his bare feet across the Lake Galilee you say well man I don't know whether I could believe that or not and then his supernatural exit walking out of a grave. Listen, friend, you have to either believe the whole Megillah, all 66 books, or you have to forget the whole thing. 
We're talking about a supernatural God. And there were all kinds of people that wanted to follow him and force him to be king their way. And so he said things that that deliberately turned them off. Why? Because basically he wanted to get rid of them because they were going to cause trouble. And he had one thing to do. He had to get to Jerusalem and die and fulfill Isaiah 53 and Psalm 22 and all the other scriptures starting back there in chapter 12 about the lamb. And even before that, when the little boy Yitzhak said, where is the lamb of the burnt offering? And even before that, when the the clothing required animal sacrifice for the uh, sinners who were being expelled because Etz Hayim is something that the Father has to draw you to. And if you want to go your own way, there is a way that seems right to a man, but that way ends in death. And so finally, he made it very clear. You see the picture of the Alpha Coleman? He said, look, you know about the manna. The people ate the manna to, to stay alive. They would have starved to death and died in the wilderness. But bread came down from heaven to keep them alive. Well, God used that as a foreshadow because now the real bread is here. And if you don't take this bread, you are going to perish with a hunger and a thirst that will make you emaciated forever in hell. I am the bread of life. That's what he said. And they didn't like to hear that. What? We know your parents. No, you don't. You don't know my father. You might know my stepfather, but you don't know my father. What? We, we know where you came from. No, you don't. We don't want to hear this. Well, unless you let the Father draw you, you will have no part of me. Then he made a an illusion, a, a, a kind of uh, off-handed reference to the Apokomen, which seems to be lost, seems to be covered up in a Takrahim type of shroud napkin, seems to have disappeared, and then, just when you think it's gone, it comes back. And that is eaten in the Pesach. And the, the cup re reminds us of the blood that gets us out of bondage, out of death in Egypt. And the matzah reminds us of the bitter herbs and the matzah of getting out of Egypt. He said, this is my body. This is me. And if you don't take this, you have no part of me. And there were people that wanted to walk away. And they wanted to just leave him and have nothing more to do with him. But Kipa, the rock, who had a confession, and that confession, you are the Zun Pundaroivishter, the Elohim Hayim, the Ben David, the Zun Pundaroivishter of the living God. And since he has the words of eternal life, Kipa said, where can we go? You have the words of eternal life. Where else can we go? We can't go anywhere. We have to stay with you or, or die. We have to receive you. 
We've, we have to feed on your word. And the matzah and the, 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 the fruit of the vine, that is you. And you are the one and the only one who can get us out of Egypt, out of bondage, out of death. And apart from you, there is no life. And you, we must hold on to at all costs. And that's what keep anew. Now, friend, there was a shooting near my front door today. That tells me I need to get closer to the Zunfunderoibister. I need to receive that Afakoman and that cup, and I need him to feed on him. He is the manna I need to feed on. His blood gets me out of Egypt. He's the Passover for me. And I hope for you. Lord, right now I want to pray that everyone will turn to Ribi Melech Hamashiach and the Afakoman that brings Chaye Olam. These Shalahim touched his body. He, the word of life, appeared. They touched him. Their eyes gazed upon him. Their hands held him. The life of Judaism, of, of the Tehiyas Hamasim, the hope of eternal life, what Abraham and all the patriarchs and prophets were looking for. He fulfilled. If you slam the casket lid down on him and say he's just a dead prophet, you are actually slamming it down on yourself because there will be no other Yeshua ben Dovid for you. There is no other name under heaven whereby you must be saved. If Zechariah came up to a man named J-E-S-U-S, Yeshua, Yahushua, Ben Yotzedak, the Kohen Gadol, and said, your name is the Zemach, Moshiach, offshoot of Hashem. Your name is the Moshiach. And if Zaharia believed it and could see it 500 years before he was born, if David could see it and called him my Lord Adoni, if Malachi could say it, say it, could see it, and he said, Ha Adon, whom you seek, will suddenly come to his temple. If Isaiah could see it and saw that he uh, rose from the dead, the Lord prolonged his days. He is Al Gibor. He's born of Ha'alma, young Batula. If Isaiah could see it, if Moses could see it and talked about a, a prophet who was coming like him, like Moses, if Jeremiah could see it, if all of them could see it, why can't you see it? Moshiach ben Dovid. I receive you right now. You are my Alpha Komen. I thank you that the Takrahim could not hold you, just like the napkin can't hold the Alpha Komen. Come into my heart, forgive my sins, take control of my life, and I will serve you forever. And everybody said,